Good morning, East Alabama and West Georgia. This is Kevin Moon from God's Country. It's time for your primetime forecast on Dr. Don's weather. Now, here's my friend, Dr. Don. Good morning, East Alabama and West Georgia. Time now for your primetime forecast for Wednesday, September 28, 2022. We're going to show you where Hurricane Ian is this morning as he makes his final approach to southwest Florida as a major catastrophic hurricane this morning. Sad, sad news uh, for folks down there in southwest Florida. We'll let you know what kind of effects we expect across East Alabama and West Georgia as the storm continues to move off to the north. We'll take a look at your Friday night high school football forecast. And, uh, yeah, we'll give you um, a good idea of what you can expect over the weekend. Coming up in this morning's edition of your primetime forecast from the Alpha Weather Center. Jamie Dukas, your local Alpha agent. Be sure you click that link at the top of this video so that you become eligible to win some great prizes from Dr. Don's Weather. All right, so the 14th annual Fall on Main Street in downtown Roanoke. Uh, been in contact with Miss Dorothy Tidwell uh, with the Randolph County Chamber of Commerce. We're talking about uh, weather conditions and decisions are going to be made this morning on this year's event that's going to be taking place in downtown Roanoke uh, starting Saturday morning uh, my recommendation is going to be to carry on with the festival um, it's going to be a little breezy and there could be a few scattered showers around but uh, overall the storm is going to be moving far enough to the east where we're not really looking at any major effects across east alabama and west georgia again now it's going to be windy and breezy from time to time um, and so uh, that decision will be made uh, later on this morning we'll let you know about it here tomorrow morning on Dr. Don's weather. Now, the bad news to that is um, my studios are in northeast Georgia, and you, most of you uh, that know me know that that's where I live, and I'm an emergency manager up here, and the storm, uh, it has been pushed a little bit further to the east than the last time we talked, but it's still going to be close enough to my area of responsibility up here in northeast Georgia uh, to where at this point it doesn't look like like the Dr. Don Roadshow is going to be able to be with you on Saturday in Roanoke. Uh, but I'm leaning toward going ahead and continuing with the festival uh, because I just think uh, the weather conditions will be okay in Roanoke on Saturday morning. But we'll let you know uh, once we talk to Miss Dorothy this morning and that final decision is made on the 14th annual Fall on Main Street in downtown Roanoke. Don't forget to head over to our YouTube channel and click that subscribe button it's free and also hit that little bell so that when we go live for severe weather you'll be guaranteed to get that push notification so you can see what the latest weather information is all right so let's talk about ian this morning uh the hurricane models or the national hurricane center models last night did uh in fact push the storm even a little bit further to the east and southeast and i think we're locked in on a pretty good track now there's still some uncertainty uh, after about uh, Saturday morning as to the exact track of what's left of Ian, but uh, very little question now that Ian is going to make landfall somewhere around Port Charlotte, uh, just north of uh, Cape Coral and just south of Sarasota, Florida, as a major Category 4 hurricane. And we're talking about sustained winds uh, in this storm uh, approaching 144 miles per hour at landfall. That will cause catastrophic wind damage. Uh, and we're talking uh, unprecedented uh, storm surge and just about everything in its path will be leveled uh, with sustained winds of around 144 miles per hour. So I uh, hope that everyone has evacuated from that area and I hope uh, those who, who have had to stay that work in emergency services are hunkered down. Uh, landfall will be later on today, probably sometime afternoon. Uh, and then the storm is expected to weaken rather quickly uh, and then move right across central Florida to near Orlando 
and then reemerge over the Atlantic Ocean just off the coast of Jacksonville and then skirt the Georgia coast and then potentially making a second landfall as a tropical storm near Tybee Island or Hilton Head, um, Tybee Island, Georgia or Hilton Head, South Carolina and then pretty much running right up the Georgia-South Carolina state line there in western South Carolina, uh, ending up maybe somewhere up in uh, northern North Carolina, extreme northeastern Tennessee by 2 a.m. Sunday. Now, that cone of uncertainty, that's just telling you that the center of circulation could track anywhere within that area, uh, still covers northeast Georgia. Uh, so for those of you up here in northeast Georgia who follow Dr. Don's weather, yeah, we can't let our guard down just yet. We are awfully concerned about gradient winds up here in northeast Georgia. You'll remember Hurricane Irma several years ago. That's what ended up happening, uh, and uh, we're concerned that that could happen again. Not necessarily a direct effect from the storm, but that gradient pressure between low pressure and high pressure could set up up here up to the backside of the Appalachian mountain chain. And uh, so we could have some significant winds up here uh, starting as soon as uh, maybe tomorrow morning and continuing into Thursday night and Friday as the storm passes to our east. We have a special uh, weather webinar at 1230 today with the National Weather Service out of Peachtree City. We'll know much more after that, but uh, just stay, uh, stay well advised of the latest weather forecast if you're up here in northeast Georgia as we head uh, through the next 24 to 48 hours. So we'll look at the spaghetti models, and this is the latest from the National Hurricane Center. Uh, and you can see where all of the different models think this storm is going to go. Uh, most of them take it now into western South Carolina, making, again, landfall somewhere between Tybee and Hilton Head, and then coming right up the western side of the state of uh, South Carolina. Uh, I do want to go back to that last graphic and give you the current information on the storm. It's located at 25.6 north or 82.9 west. The maximum sustained winds at the moment are 140. We expect it to go to about 144 before making landfall. Movement is to the north-northeast at 10 miles per hour. It's moving very slow, and that's just horrible news for the folks down there in the southwest Florida uh, coastal areas because we're talking torrential rainfall. Some locations may get upwards of 25 inches of rain. Uh, storm surge 10 to 12 feet in the uh, Cape Coral area back up toward Port Charlotte and Sarah Minnesota uh, is just going to be devastating, and our thoughts and prayers uh, go out to everyone uh, that's left behind down there because it's going to be the next uh, 24 to 48 hours uh, is just going to be horrific down there in southwest Florida. They're going to need a lot of help when this thing is over with, so uh, stay tuned to ways that you can help those folks down there. Uh, just devastating uh, this morning on the southwest Florida coast. All right, so uh, let's take a look at the current conditions of the East Alabama Bee Company. 57 degrees currently. The high temperature yesterday was almost a perfect 74. We have fair skies. The wind is a little breezy this morning. Out of the north at 6, gusting to 13. The relative humidity has come way down. Uh, that will start to recover, I think, within the next 24 hours as uh, the moisture from Ian uh, moves a little bit further to the north. But uh, for most of today, low relative humidity 52 percent the barometric pressure 30.17 no rain officially sunrise at 6 32 this morning and the sun sets at 6 31 p.m this afternoon here's your six-day forecast from the alpha weather center jamie dukas your local alpha agent we have a red flag warning in effect for today for east alabama and west georgia basically this means that with those low relative humidities and the gusty gradient winds that we have going on outside. Uh, burning outside is highly discouraged. 
do your local fire department and your neighbor a favor and do not burn outside today. It can get away from you real quick uh, and then you got a mess. Uh, so red flag warning in effect today. Uh, don't burn outside. Uh, that's just uh, not a safe thing to do with the wind and the relative humidity. 72 will be the high this afternoon. Webster says that's perfect. And we're going to give you another one of those on Thursday as a bonus. Uh, sunny skies, 72 Thursday afternoon. And then on Friday, we'll start to see a few clouds. Uh, it's going to be breezy. It'll be breezy and windy uh, today, tonight, tomorrow, probably Friday. Uh, the wind should start to relax a little bit by noon on Saturday. 20% uh, chance of rain Friday, 30% chance of rain during high school football Friday night. Now, we're not talking a sot in rain where it's going to rain all night long. We're talking about occasional showers, uh, occasional tropical type showers where the showers move in, it rains for 5, 10 minutes, then it's gone. And 20 minutes later, here comes another band and you'll get another shower or two. Um, so all in all, given the fact that we have a major Category 4 hurricane uh, down in the Gulf of Mexico, this is not a bad forecast. 40% chance of rain on Saturday with a high near 70. 20% uh, chance of rain Saturday night. Then on Sunday, the storm starts to pull off to the northeast and uh, we'll bring those rain chances way down. As a matter of fact, by Sunday afternoon, back to beautiful sunny skies with no chance of rain. 73 and then Monday will be mostly sunny 75 will be your high temperature let's take a look at your Southern Union State Community College live Doppler HD radar and there it is uh, extremely well-defined eye with uh, the hurricane it's got a little bit of a wobble to it but uh, the symmetrics of uh, Ian uh, are just uh, really scary when you stop and look at it. We've got great uh, uh, convection all the way around the center of circulation uh, as it continues to slowly creep up the Florida southwest coast and uh, is expected to make landfall there around Port Charlotte or between Cape Coral and Sarasota. I'm going to zoom out just a little bit to give you a little better perspective uh, of just how big this storm is. Uh, we have uh, convection all the way out into the Atlantic uh, by about 100 miles, and then we go all the way back down to the center of circulation. So as we often tell you, um, we, we see the worst weather on the right-hand side of the storm. Uh, you hear us talk about that all this all the time. Some folks refer to this as the dirty side of the storm. That's everything over to the right, uh, and that's the case in this particular storm. You'll you'll notice back over here, just north of Miami, uh, near West Palm Beach, between West Palm Beach and Port St. Lucie, uh, we have tornado warnings out there this morning. Uh, saw a lot of that last night. There's a good bit of damage uh, down around uh, Fort Lauderdale and back towards. Naples uh, from tornadoes that touched down down there last night. Well, now we're seeing that happen this morning around and just north of West Palm Beach. Uh, all those little uh, red uh, polygons you see pop up there are all tornado warnings. Uh, what happens is these storms come to the north, and then as the storm starts pulling them back to the left, uh, you start to get that twisting in the storm, so you get that rotation that starts happening uh, as the storms get into that right front quadrant of the storm and start to get pulled back to the left. Uh, and so there you are. We're seeing that happen this morning. So tornadoes are a threat across central Florida today. Uh, then the storm will come in, make landfall, and continue to the northeast near Winter Haven, Florida. Uh, it's going to come very close to Orlando. Uh, this would be uh, later on today into tomorrow morning. Uh, then back out into the Atlantic, just off of the St. Augustine coast. And then coming back in, making a second landfall somewhere around Tybee Island. Um, just uh, off of uh, the Tybee Island coast. Uh, and then probably coming between Tybee Island and Hilton Head. And then uh, moving across I-95 there. Uh, just to the north of Savannah, and it'll continue 
uh, across western South Carolina all the way up uh, to around Greenville, Spartanburg, uh, and then eventually on up into North Carolina. That's the current track uh, from the National Hurricane Center. But again, you folks up here in northeast Georgia, I'm talking about Athens, Gainesville, Toccoa, uh, Clayton, Dahlonega, Cleveland, Helen, uh, Hiawassee, Blairsville, uh, we're still in that cone of uncertainty on the exact track of this storm, and it certainly will be close enough to give us uh, some effects as it moves off to the north. And we're still concerned about the possibility of gradient winds setting up on the back side of the mountain chain up here, too. So we'll know more about that later today when we finish our briefing with the National Hurricane Center and the Weather Service. But just a mess out there this morning. I think the storm stays far enough away, though, that East Alabama and West Georgia shouldn't see major impacts from the storm, though it will be breezy with occasional rain showers across the region. Don't forget to follow us over on Twitter. It's at DSTREN1040. We broadcast all of our weather information on Twitter, just as we do on Facebook, YouTube, and at DrDonWX.com. Don't forget you can catch my daily weather forecast over on God's Country and the classic 89.7 East Alabama's classic rock giant. Good Lord willing, the creek don't rise. We'll see you back in your first day tomorrow morning with the latest on Ian and your weekend weather forecast. Dr. Dodge away.